Hey guys, this is Shane with DNS Adventures and today I'm going to be doing something at the beginning of the year I did not think I would be doing this year. And that is winterizing the RV. So I'm not sure if this is really going to be in-depth video because one, I've never winterized the Reflection 150 series before. It doesn't really have to be that in-depth because we're still going to be heating this thing at least to 50 degrees over the winter. I'm just doing this in case some reason the propane runs out or something when I'm not paying attention and it gets below freezing at night and I don't want the water lines to freeze. So just doing this as a precaution basically. Yeah, we don't have any water running into our rig right now so we can't just see the water running and we also don't have a sewer connection. We do have electricity running to the RV. Today I'm just gonna be winterizing. One of the first things I'm gonna do is empty out the water heater. It probably needs to be cleaned out anyway. It's just been sitting here for a couple months. And also drain our water tank if there's anything left in there as well. Those will be our first two steps here. And at least with the Reflection 150 series, I think our um, mini light or Rockwood mini light had something similar like that but there's a low water drain point underneath plug you just pull down here right in front of the um, driver's side and rear tire you just pull that out let all your water run out and depending how much water you have in there that could take a while ours actually is a little bit bubbly because it still has a little bit of vinegar in there from when I was cleaning it so if you haven't already, you would also want to empty your gray tank and your black tank because that's not something you want to have frozen in there, especially the black tank. So if you're about ready to winterize for the year, go ahead and take that to dump station, get that all nice and flushed out. You don't have some frozen poo sickles in there for the winter time. We already drained out our gray and black tank when we we're at the last RV park, so we're good there. There's no water in the system besides obviously quite a bit in our fresh water tank. I'll also be emptying up the water heater in here in a second. This this water heater is very interesting on these Reflection 150 series. It's a really nice water heater. Like almost, I want to say on demand, but it's a really quick refresh rate as far as the water goes. But man, these things are definitely hard to get to. I think it's an aluminum tank, so it doesn't take the anode rods in here, whatever they're called. I probably just said that wrong. It's just a little cap here, but there's no way you could get a rod in here the way this is all situated. So it's really a pain to get a wrench down here in order to loosen this guy up to, in order to empty it out. Guess I might as well do that at the same time as this. Yeah, this probably could have been designed a little bit better. You can get it in there, but then this little metal strip up here is in the way, blocking you from going too far this way. So you kind of have to go around it. You can't get a ratchet back in there because it's so tight. And you got to watch out from bumping up against these wires over here so you don't tear those. And got to get a good grip on here so you don't destroy the plastic so definitely some room for improvement on this water heater at least the drainage port here good thing though is if you do get this thing started with the wrench you can get the finish it off with your fingers here i gotta stand back so i don't get water all over me you don't really need a bunch of teflon tape either to plug this thing up it seems to seal pretty well i haven't had any problems with leaks but yeah, this is just a six gallon tank so you just let that drip off the side and that'll take a while to drain might as well open this up to help there we go yeah get some airflow in there to get that flowing out a little bit faster and not get my wrench all rusty yeah when we first bought this reflection we thought we'd never have to winterize it because we're well eventually would but we're planning on living in this thing for a good five six years before we even got a home base so Definitely learning a bit, but it's a with this Nautilus system, I'll show you here in a second, it's pretty easy to do. Some people just pump air through rather than putting this antifreeze stuff in your lines, which honestly might be the better route just because this stuff takes a while to flush out of there so you get the taste of it out of out of the system. But at least that's what we had in our mini light. All right, it looks like that's about done over here. Having a little bit in there is not gonna be a big deal. Technically, you could pump a little bit into your fresh water tank too, at least the bottom of it, so you don't have anything freezing on the bottom, but I don't think a little bit of ice inside your fresh water tank is really going to do a whole lot of damage. 
you disagree, go ahead and comment below, but <laughs> I think would be fine. As long as it's not expanding on those lines inside your RV, that's really the biggest issue. Make sure you don't bust any of those lines and have a water leak in the future. We're also in a fairly mild winter climate, so we're not gonna go nearly above and beyond. I mean, you can see some ice and snow or whatever right here, but that's just because it's on the dark side of the RV. It's not letting the sun hit it. We aren't gonna go above and beyond as far as winterizing the RV. Like some people would put skirts and everything along the sides to keep it nice and warm, but the temperatures for the most part stay above freezing for the highs around here. So it's not gonna be a super deep freeze or anything. We just dip below freezing at nighttime. So, so at one point I actually had a hose that I used <laughs> to pump this um, into the RV. I might just have to use a short water, water hose instead because I have no idea where I put that. You'll, you'll need something in order to siphon that water inside with your pump. At least if you're using this Nautilus system here. I dug around enough and I found it. Just this clear hose. You screw this in. It's kind of nasty. Screw this in into your RV here and then put the tubing to your antifreeze so you can pump it in just like you'd be pumping in any water into your system. Sorry, kind of bouncing around here, but putting this plug back in. And I'm also gonna be shutting off the valve underneath the RV. It's not really supposed to happen. And then I'll start pumping that antifreeze into the RV. And this Nautilus system here makes it pretty easy and hard to mess up on here. But they actually have a winterized setting here. This will flip it down here. Then you flip this over this way. This is already in the right position. Move this guy down here. I believe this is the one that actually avoids pumping it to your... Um, hot water tank because you don't want any antifreeze going in there sitting there for a long period of time. This is really just to fill up your lines and not much else. You can put a little bit in your gray tank, your black tank, and just anywhere that you would need to, where you wouldn't want um, the water to freeze at. Just put a little bit in there, it should be fine. You don't need to fill up your gray tank or black tank or anything like that. Pretty sure you can buy this at any RV store. I don't know if Walmart has something like this too. But it literally just screws right in here to your city water connection, just like you'd be pumping water in your system. But this will just be pumping it through your lines. So next time you put the other end in one of these jugs. Another thing I forgot to mention is if you do have a lot of water in your lines already, you just go ahead and pump that out until basically air is coming out. So you don't have a lot of mix of water and um, antifreeze in your lines. We've already done that. So don't forget that step. That's an important one as well. We got it plugged in there. All we got to do is trip on our water pump here. See how it's already pressurized in there? I'm just gonna have to um, basically turn on a faucet inside and that'll start pumping this in. We'll wanna do every single line inside the house, including um, if you have any outside um, pumps like this, you'll wanna pump a little bit of antifreeze through those. My goodness, the ladybugs and stink bugs really attacked around here. But all you gotta do is pump this guy. It'll take a while to get some in the lines. I might actually have to go back out there and see if I have enough in that pink thing. I might just run it empty here in a second. It's starting to gain some pressure. So it turns out I did have a little water in my lines. And the pink stuff should be coming out soon. Yep, see that pink? You don't need a bunch ran through there. Just a little bit through each line so it's filled up the entire line. Do the same thing on this one. Make sure you get some pink in there. This is usually a bit easier with two people, so you can have someone checking on your pump out there. Ugh, flies and ladybugs everywhere. I'm just gonna cheat over here. Put this in the sink so I don't fill it. So I don't hit those. Or fill that up with a bunch of antifreeze down there too. Just keep on looking until it turns pink. And it turned pink. Same thing with the cold line. There might still be a little pink in it, so you gotta let it run for a little bit until you know you change from clear to pink. There you go, got some pink. Then we just step over here to the kitchen. Do the same thing. If you have one of these, obviously you'll wanna run hot and cold because there are still two lines coming to this thing here. I might need to go over there and 
Yeah, sounds like we just ran out of pink stuff. Fair enough. Let me open another one of these containers. This does make it easier for a one-man job rather than two-person job. Just gotta stick it there in the bottom to make sure it siphons all of it out. Yeah, I'll try to get that later. But it does have to pump all the way across there, so that's a lot of antifreeze to go all the way to our kitchen sink. So I wanted to make sure we had enough for all of our lines. But continue this until we get some pink here. It looks like we already got some pink. To get build a little bit more pressure before I keep on going here. Make sure it's all the way full on that line. Try the other line. You know we might have a build up of calcium again, honestly. That might be why this pressure is a little bit lower. There we go. Got some pink. I did forget one thing in the bathroom that's very important. You do not want to forget the toilet. Oh, it's already got some pink in that. I'll just leave a little, little up top too there. Nice and pretty pink. All right, so we might be able to just pull this off with two jugs. We'll see here. We're still gonna pump it through this, and there's one in the back. The one in the back was not working, so I might not actually be able to winterize that, which is probably not good. But I was not able to get water out of there even without the antifreeze, so. Let's get the attachment for this, which is right here, and pump some water through this thing. All right, I got this guy, and I don't know if I'll be able to do this with one hand. Get the water pumped in there. Yep, already got pink. Doesn't surprise me because it's right by the pump, so it doesn't have to travel very far. Do the same thing for the other one. The other nozzle here. Make sure you run it for a little bit. Make sure all the clear stuff's gone. We're good to go there. Turn that off. And let's go to the back and see if we can get that one working. I don't think I can. Let me know if you've ran into this issue, but I've had trouble actually putting this into the spray port in the back. I don't know if it's rusted shut or what, but I cannot get it in there. But I'll see if I can do that here in a second. The good thing is I don't think I've ever actually ran water out of here. We may have once back two years ago. But you should be able to press this in there and shove it into there and it'll stick. But it seems to be stuck for whatever reason. I don't want to break it. So I might just be sending Grand Design or whoever makes this. I don't know who makes this. A uh, quick email or something to see how they would go about this. Actually, you know, after a little bit of force, I got it jammed in there. So still works. Which is good, that means I can get all this water out. See, it turned clear. It turned pink because it's running right off that kitchen sink so it doesn't have to go very far. We are winterized as far as the water lines go. So after you got that done, that gets everything through all the different outlets inside the house uh, or different water spigots within the house and outside. Make sure you do that. Then one more thing I'm probably gonna do is just put a little bit and our fresh water tank as well. Just let it sit there on the bottom. Yeah, so it's just a siphon to tank via pump. So you just go like this, you go like this, and then you have that all lined up. Turn your pump on. And that will still avoid hitting your hot water tank. I'm not gonna put a ton in there, but enough fill up that bottom part all right guys so for me that took about two and a half gallons of antifreeze just got it from wally world and that got her done one more thing i am going to do even though we're probably going to move this rv sooner rather than later is just put the wheel covers on as well um, to protect it from uv light if you're going to have your rv sitting somewhere for a long time that's always a good idea protect those tires I'll put links to everything I used in the description below, just some links to maybe Amazon or something like that. Probably including these wool covers, but make sure you measure your wool covers and don't use the exact ones I have, unless you have the exact same tires that I have. And I have, I have ST225-75R15s. 
So if you have something of that size, they're fairly similar or smaller, I should say, they should be able to fit on yours, but definitely make sure you measure your tires first. All right, guys, tire covers on and it frees in. We're pretty much good to go. Another quick tip that I just thought of after I came back inside, if you do um, keep your RV in storage, it might be a good idea to remove that lead acid battery and put it somewhere where you can trickle charge it or make sure you charge it periodically to make sure that doesn't go bad. And a couple other routine things, making sure if you have a um, open cell battery that you add some distilled water to those lead acid batteries as well to keep those topped off and in good shape. Otherwise, you'll probably be buying a lead acid battery sooner that, rather than later. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you have any other tips or tricks that you use on your RV when you're winterizing, leave those in the comments below. I'd love to see those, as I'm sure other people would as well. If you guys like this video, hit that like button, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like it, you can also check us out at dnsadventures.com. And as always, adventure on and stay warm. Yeah, Dan and I will finish rolling out what we have left this geotextile. We'll probably have to order a little bit more.